Everybody, this is Keith Henry. Welcome to Hill Field House on the campus of Morgan State University. It is time to talk with our head coach of Morgan State Volleyball, Ramona Riley Bozier, who is going into year 30 wow. in, in her illustrious career here at Morgan State. And coach, very few. Very few have gone this long in any sport in Division One. Mm -hmm. um, talk, talk about. <laughs> seem um, like it go. Does it seem like the years go quick, or does it go? It it's going by really, really fast. To be honest with you, um, it's it's crazy because there's like more people who tell me that what year I'm going into, and I don't even have the time really think about it um, until someone else happens to bring it up and then there's emphasis put on it and um, you know every day is like another day for me every year is another year we just get ready to go meet some new people try to get out there and, and win a championship every year and um, and so 30 years came seemed like really really fast and um, I think um, the, the relationships that I have with, you know, a lot of players that started off with me and I'm still so connected to them. I, I think that's why I don't never think about the years because I'm, I see them all the time. And, and whether it's a wedding or it's a baby shower or they're at my house for something, I think just because we have that connection, it, it, you know, I tend to forget how many years I've actually um, have been here uh, as, as a coach. So... I, I feel so humble, so grateful, um, thankful to Morgan State for allowing me to sit in this seat for 29 years and upcoming, of course, as being 30. And I couldn't ask for anything more. So I met a lot of great young ladies who also have kept me humble and um, they keep me going, keep me current, uh, I should say. and. I, I just feel blessed to have an opportunity to have been a part of like so many amazing young ladies who have come and gone and doing amazing things in their career and feel like, you know, I had something to do with um, their success off the court. Um, coaches, not just, not just a team, it's just a family which grows every year by yeah. <laughs> the number of women coming through. Like you have, you have, it's like you have your own, couple of family trees I let's do, say i do i do and and some coaching trees as well <laughs> yeah um you're right um and that's just what i had talked about you know i i kind of forget like who played in what era and what year um because the uh the alumni kind of take on like whoever the new players are and then they start to establish like this relationship and then they get connected through social media so there is that that volleyball family connection that just doesn't seem to go away. And, you know, I I get excited. I, I like when the alumni meet the current players. And, you know, some of them are working in their field, and some of those kids are, are majoring in the uh, the majors that they had, and they, they offer, like, great advice. And when we don't have alumni that can come back, you know, thank goodness for social media that everyone stays connected and everybody wants to be a part in and so, like, if you air this, and some people are going to be excited, like, oh, man, I wish I was there. And so then you'll see the next year that, you know, they may try to come back. And, and then that's how we continue to keep that that um, volleyball family unity because people are wanting to come back and be here. I mean, Natalie came back to play. She lives in California, and she wanted to be here, and she wanted to play. And um, so I'm really, you know, excited about when people want to come back home and, and be right here on, on campus. So you're right. It is a family, and uh, I'm kind of happy to be a part of it. <laughs> um, Coach, let's get – we'll get into briefly last last season. I know not not what you wanted because the goal always is a championship. Right. <laughs> um, you, all, you all got into the tournament and uh, ran into a very tough but then Cookman mm -hmm. squad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, honestly, Keith, at the very beginning, I wasn't quite sure what type of season um, 
we were going to have. We really only had like one true starter that was returning, and that was Ke Kiana Brown. She started every single match. There was a few other players who started and, you know, or didn't start. So she was the most consistent player that we had had that the year, last year coming back. And everyone else was, they were all new. You know, we had a freshman um, setter. We had a freshman libero. Um, and uh, I just said, hey, look, let's just try to go out here and make something happen. We started off the season where we had multiple people, you know, hurt. Uh, our freshman libero came in. She was in a really bad car accident. We didn't think we would have her, like, at all. And, and you know, she ended up recovering. Um, she had missed, like, the first two weeks of the season. So it was just kind of really shaky. And, and I think when we had played, uh, I think it was Hampton, the very first conference match of the year. I can't remember if it was Hampton or Norfolk. And that excited me. And I said, hey, look, we just beat them. So we, we are getting into the tournament. And then once we got into the tournament, then the goal was, of course, to try to win a championship. So uh, we did better than what I had expected, knowing the different obstacles that we had in front of us, like at the beginning of the season. Um, coach, get into this year. You have eight upperclassmen total, four, 14 on the team, and a lot, and other upperclassmen, more about five, six, six juniors. Something like that. <laughs> And yeah. um, what um, talk talk about that uh, upperclassmen dominated, and up and how does it and what advantages does it have for for you right now? You think? Um, I'm not quite sure what the advantages are at this point because well, one of those juniors, um, for the most part, she's probably going to be out for the rest of the season. She had surgery earlier in the year, but for some reasons, you know, she's just not healthy you know, to where she um, has recovered. And so we, we definitely can't count her. We have three JUCO transfers that came in. And um, so we're looking for, like, some leadership, some people that can get on the court and help us try to win right away. And then um, Monette Daniels, who played, you know, kind of a part-time role last year, um, She's 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 looked good since we started um, the season, so we're definitely counting on on her to be out there. And um, uh, Tasha, who who started for us last year, uh, I think she's going to play a big role for us offensively as well as defense. She's probably one of the best defensive players out there um, on the court. But so I, hopefully this will be. Uh, a positive thing having the uh, the JUCO transfers. Um, the freshmen, uh, the freshmen coming coming in. Who, who is who at this point has uh, impressed has impressed you? Who, who's who stepped out, who's stepped out? That's a right true now. true freshman. Right. Um. Well, we really only have like one true recruited uh, scholarship freshman, and um, and that's uh, Michaela. And uh, Michaela, she's, she's still very young. She's still learning. She's very small in height. She has a big jump. And now she has to see how she can make it all work for her, playing on a, on a higher level, not being able to do what she probably would do if she was in high school. So she's still learning how can she um, find different ways to score and just make good, smart decisions. Um, you know, she just still right now has a lot of learning um, to do. But she's come in and she's been working hard and, you know, I can't ask for any more um, any more than that. Um, Schedule-wise, pretty, pretty, pretty good one. You all start at, at, at the tournament at UNC Greensboro. You all start with ACC uh, member Wake Forest. Yeah. Fun, isn't it? Of course. <laughs> uh, you know, since I've been the coach in scheduling, you know, I, I just schedule whoever, whoever calls us and if we can make the schedule work. Um, I like having the opportunity for us to play like in um, the hometown or, or, you know, some key players that are on our team. And just so happen, you know, the Carolinas, they always have a bunch of tournaments, so we – we always are looking to travel at least one time to North Carolina. Um, 
and I never pay any attention if it's an ACC or SEC, Big 12, it, it doesn't matter. It's like, let's, let's just go and, you know, we go there and we can make some great things happen. And, you know, of course, that's the goal. But the other piece to it is just learning and preparing um, for conference play. Coach, uh, after Greensboro, then you all head to uh, uh, was South, Southeast Missouri mm -hmm. for that tournament, and then you all come back here for Battle of Baltimore, just just, just up the street at Loyola with UMBC and Loyola and Presbyterian. Um, the non conference the non conference schedule challenging. Y'all get to uh, y'all got to get uh. A couple of do couple of local rivals in Loyola UMBC and like that. Uh, talk about how cha um, what what this what this type of challenge um, gives you. Um. Well, like you said, you know, it, I don't think the schedule is like very overwhelming. I think it's a schedule that you know we can find a way to do fairly decent um, in in the tournaments that we are going to and get out there and really compete. I think we can make like some really good things happen and hopefully take some wins off of some of these teams in the tournament. Um, when we get to um, when we get to the Battle of Baltimore, uh, you know, that's it's kind of like a crosstown rivalry, you know. We, we want to win the Battle of Baltimore. We, we want to knock down UMBC and knock down Loyola, but we want to knock everybody down. I mean, of course, ultimately that, that is indeed the goal. Um, but I'm kind of excited about the Battle of Baltimore because we haven't done it in a while. And, you know, it, it, it's kind of like bragging rights for this, this area. And those are the, the rights that we, we want to have coming our way. We want the trophy to come here to uh, Morgan State. And I think we finish it off with another tournament in North Carolina. And once again, it's not overwhelming. Um, schools there but yet they're all still really good and you know it would be nice to really finish strong in that tournament because then after that then we'll start opening up with conference play uh, and also I almost forgot but you all you all get you all get to go to DC and play American oh, yeah. always, oh, yeah, always a tough <laughs> always a tough challenge against uh, coach Goldberg and his uh, Eagles yeah, you know, it's, I don't know what it is like when we play them. Like there's some moments like it's very, very competitive and, you know, we've taken some sets off of them and been in position to take not just sets, but, you know, win a match. And then there's times it's just ugly. And um, last year it, w it was kind of there. And even when we had some opportunities to do some good things, we just, we just didn't do it. And um, I had a chance to, uh, uh, go up this summer to American and you know kind of help out at one of his uh, clinics and you know he's he's got a good squad you know it's a lot of the kids that are returning um, and then I also met some of the kids that were new coming in and they're there are some very good solid players so we've been going back and forth playing each other for so many years because he's been there for 20 something years and in some years we'll take it off and not play each other but it's an ongoing scheduling thing, and uh, I'm really hoping to get there and, and surprise Mr. Barry Goldberg <laughs> and uh, really put some pressure on American. Um, after after this non-conference schedule, into the MEAC North, always a tough thing. Always an ever-changing conference, yeah. too. Like, every year we have... Different new coaches, like a coaching caravan, especially a captain. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, and, and I guess in some ways, um, you know, like you had kind of said it earlier, like not many, you know, stay for 30 years and um, there's more people leaving after three years or two or four, depending on whatever the nature of the situations are. Um, but as as we talk about the conference um, and talk about the North, well, the North is very, very tough. Uh, there's no team that you can just go in there and think you're going to get a win. 
you're going to have to work hard to, to win. And um, me being a part of the conference for the last 30 years, and it's kind of nice seeing where the conference, where it was, and to where it is, like, where it is right now. Not only are we competitive within the conference, you know, we have a lot of teams that are competitive outside of the conference. So just kind of watching where, how the conference has um, evolved up until this point. Um, but we got Hampton and Norfolk, you know, right off the bat first weekend. On the road, on too. On the road, on the road, on the road. And, you know, sometimes I don't mind playing on the road. I think sometimes the kids don't like mind playing on the road either. I think sometimes playing at home, it's, some people take it on where it's more pressure to play in front of your peers. Um, and uh, either way, for me, I, you know, of course, I'm coaching. I'm not playing. But I don't, I don't mind when we're on the road. And I do believe that Hampton and Norfolk both have very solid teams. Um, they have their coaches returning from last year as well. And both teams have some solid players returning. So it's not going to be a, um, it's not going to be an easy weekend, uh, but it definitely would be nice to start off being two and zero. and they were a road game. So, yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of the conference evolving, you have been around for the 30 years. Um, how, how do you, how do you think this conference has evolved? In what ways do you think this conference has evolved from from what you've from what you've seen and what you've experienced? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's evolved because there's more teams that are a whole lot more competitive. I think that administration has really done a good job of adding more money into the budget, so you can you can build on your program, have more scholarships, have more resources where. You, you can travel, you know, outside of your regional area, which also creates opportunities for um, for recruiting. So I, I think it's just those merging. It is now a merging sport for the uh, for the MIAC, and you know we we have a lot of teams that are beating teams outside of our conference. So you you know everyone doesn't have to wait and come to the conference and be, you know, I don't know. I'm gonna say like two and. I'm sorry, I'll say, yeah, two and eight, where now there's a lot more uh, balance and our, our conference schools are, like I said, are actually beating non-conference play. So I, I chalk that up to administration, you know, putting the right person in place to coach these teams and, um, and like I said, and add money into the program. And, and that's where Morgan is. I mean, Morgan, we haven't gotten to like, full 12 out-of-state scholarships, um, but to know where we started to where we are, um, it's it's a whole lot better and then definitely puts myself in a position to where I can now go out and get some decent players and come in and, and possibly win another championship. Um, coach, the defending champions are, of course, in our division with Howard. Um, what... What's the challenge to try to take that away and uh, get back, get back, get back to that championship um, that you all? It's been it's been a little while since you all won the title, mm -hmm. and, and obviously the goal is to win it. Yes. How, <laughs> so how, how do you all get back on top of the mountain? Um, well, it's gonna start with you know um, being confident and playing hard and knowing how to win against the non-conference opponent. And once you start winning some games and feeling confident, then it's just going to be a carryover. I, I do believe that Howard has a good team. They have a lot of returning players. They, they lost a couple very good players for them, like, like the libero. I think she was a very solid player. Um, and they lost a couple other people, um, you know, like they're outside, I think it was Catherine, if I'm not mistaken. Broussard. Uh-huh. And um, so, you know, but he had some players, you know, waiting to, you know, waiting to take her place. Um, so it's going to be really interesting, you know, what the, the makeup of their team, because those are two key players for um, the program, but you also have player of the year, um, player coming back. And what I'm hoping for us is that, we 
I feel like we have a couple players on our team that are definitely could be decent. I mean, could be candidates for player of the year. And I think if we can find a way for them to go out there, have a, a solid match every single time they play, I think they're going to be able to do like some really great things um, for us. And the goal was not to just rely on our, our middle hitters. Like, like you said, Keanu Brown, Keanu Brown's a beast. I really feel like she got cheated last year in the conference. I think she's in truly, by far, one of the better better middles in the conference, and which you know stinks that the schools in the South can't really see her as much because we don't really play the the Southern schools. But Kiana played well in every match that we um, we played conference uh, in conference play except for when we went to Howard once and when we went to Hampton once. Everyone else, she like totally dominated. And, and so if we, can, if we can definitely get what we got from her last year and then pick that up with some other players, um, I, I really do believe that we can be a force to be reckoned with in the conference. Um, Coach D, like I said, you've been here a while. Black? The uh, years ago, we've done north south meets. It, what 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 needs to happen in order for something like that to <laughs> go again? It would be nice to see your southern counterparts and not just tournament time. You see them and you don't and know too much about them except right. for what's on the tape. Yeah, you know, Keith, that's a great question and it's so interesting because when all the new coaches come in the conference and that's like okay how, why are we doing this how come we're not playing each other and, you know they get frustrated and you know I, I, I think that if the administration in terms of like the athletic directors or a senior administrator it would have to come from them making the push and saying you know let's take a look at this and let's see how we can make it work financially because that's right. like one of the issues um, and for the most part, almost every school in the conference, almost every school in the conference, um, they take a flight trip. So if you're taking a flight trip within your program, then that means that there are some dollars there. And that flight trip can be, you know, you going to uh, play a conference opponent. Um, so it, it would really have to take the, the ADs and the presidents really pushing it. Um, it's something that the coaches, we want. You know, we've been asking to try to move more so toward, like, the how the uh, MEAC basketball schedule is set up. You may not be able to play everyone, but um, 